What's up, everybody? My name is Lee Shaner, and you're tuned into You Feel Me. So here we are on the You Feel Me podcast, sitting in front of this beautiful purple background with the plush velvet and and candles. Just you know, it's like apartment dreams. Uh, Angel wings. There you go. Because our theme this month is independent, and so Adam and I, you know Adam. Uh, I know Adam. You, you know Adam. I know Adam. We chose you uh, for independent for a multitude of reasons, but mainly just because we look at you as a strong, independent woman. You feel me? Like I N D E P E N D E N T. Do you know what that means? Um, and so. Um, <laughs> you and I have talked before, and mm-hmm. so we don't have to go all the way back. I kind of just want to catch up with you over what's happened in the last few years because it seems it's like— It's been a minute. Yeah, it's been a minute. It's been like two years, three years? Two and a half probably, two years? right? Yeah. Uh, I'm not counting, but it was this—no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I think you're counting. Uh, life has taken on a new trajectory, I feel like, or it's kind of exponentially grown for you in the last few years. So I would love mm-hmm. to talk kind of about um, that trajectory and how life is different from it was when I met you because I met you right after World Vision came out. Mm-hmm. Um, you were still a very independent rapper on an independent mm-hmm. label. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I would imagine soon thereafter, as things started to take off, everybody wanted a piece of Tommy Genesis, right? <laughs> <laughs> is that what happened? I'm like a pie. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we talked after World Vision. Mm-hmm. I kind of took a few, you know, it was three years until I put out the project that I just put out in November, the self-titled album. Tommy, which is wonderful. Yeah, Tommy Genesis. But but Tommy's a song on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You got it, you know. Um, Hmm. I don't really know why I did that, but it was just, I think because when you're the one writing all your own music and like doing everything down to the point of like art direction, directing my videos, editing my videos, doing all these things. It takes so much out of me and so much time to decide what to do as an artist because as an artist, you're just, I don't know, one day you you wake up feeling happy, the next day you're sad, the next day you're mad for no reason. It's just the the moods you go through to make art. And um, I took like three years to, not necessarily to make the project, but kind of just like two years off. And in those two years, I did a lot of modeling. I did a lot of fashion stuff. So then because of that, I created this other lane for myself. Mm -hmm. And then when I came back, um, I made this project. Mm. Now I'm back making music. You are. Got so much new music too. Do you? Not out yet, but you know, I'm back. I I heard the new single. Oh, I'm 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 yours. yours. I'm yours. Yeah. It's great. Thank you. Yeah. That's a song I made for my family. Do you think during that kind of two-year period um, where you're working more on fashion stuff and Mm -hmm. and modeling, did that still satisfy kind of the same creative part of your brain? Because you mentioned, like, I Mm -hmm. I know, like, you went to art school. You're you're a true visual artist and a musician. And so that part of your creative brain probably needs to be satisfied a lot of different ways. I did a lot of drawing. Yeah. I have... I actually want to have a show soon. Yeah. In in those two years, um, I just didn't put any pressure on myself. I think, you know, at at that time I wasn't signed and like there was just no pressure on me to do something. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of just figuring out who I was and who I wanted to be. And I came to the realization that what I was doing um, wasn't necessarily for me. And I was like, I just want to make music that makes people feel good about themselves yeah, wherever I mean, they are in life. And But I needed those two years just to f- feel good about my own self in a weird way and to grow and to experiment. And, um, yeah, I did a lot of drawing. I did... I, I was still making music. I just didn't put it out. Yeah. I mean, I feel like on Tommy Genesis, you can feel that growth. There's such a different, I mean, you can tell it's the same human making the music, but I think the level of kind of songwriting exponentially grew. I think the production value grew. I I think, and I think like, um, you really get to show a duality of your personality too. The the first half of the record and the second half of the record are almost, they're almost like different um, Mm -hmm. sides of your personality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Was that something that you wanted to explore while you're making the record is like showing a more full version of yourself? I didn't try to do that. Mm -hmm. And I really struggled with even putting that out because a lot of people told me that I can't be two different people. I have to choose who I am. You Mm -hmm. have to choose if you're Tommy or you have to choose if you're Genesis. And you know, I grew up, my name is Genesis and my my artist name is Tommy Genesis and I name myself because mm-hmm. that's what you can do when you're an artist. Mm-hmm. And 
I struggled with that. I had a lot of insecurity about that. And I felt really vulnerable when the album dropped because I didn't know how it would be received. Received, Yeah, because a lot of people just know me from making fetish rap, making dark music, you know, being poetic. And then I dropped an album that was like one foot in pop and then one foot kind of in rap. But right. it was just a different feeling. But I always try to tell people like, you can be whoever you want. And don't tell someone that you can't have a duality that already exists inside of you. You know, you it's there. That that's actually who I am. And I have both light and dark, both like I don't want to say evil because I'm not evil. I'm right. actually really nice and friendly. I'm a sweetheart, but I have I have thoughts that go other places and I have emotions and I think it's okay to not be who they think you are, but to be who you actually are in that moment. Well, I want to say whether intentional or not, I think while listening to the album, you can kind of feel that growth because it does, like you said, you have like one foot in rap, one foot in pop. And the first half Mm -hmm. of the record does feel like uh, a direct lineage of of world vision and those kind of darker fetish rap things. But then Mm -hmm. it seems like, you know, as the album goes on, it does get brighter. It's almost like a light at the end of the tunnel. Like you got these pop songs, you know what I'm saying? Where it's like, oh, you're finding this happiness that you can talk about, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Well, there's my analysis. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, one thing you just said about like, um, you know, that you're not evil and you're actually sweet. Right. Mm-hmm. One thing that I read about independent women in general is that m- a lot of times people mistake independent women for being like cold, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And being like mean or yeah. something. But it's uh, in actuality. And I mean, you look at your photos, you never smile <laughs> in them. You, I started smiling. You did? I post, yeah, I started smiling because yeah. I, I honestly just did it for everyone who was like, why don't you smile? Why don't you smile? I, I do smile every day, all day. Well, oh, and that's what like, Adam I and I were talking about that too of photo. like, yo, <laughs> we were like worried like, oh, now that Tommy's all big, I hope she's still the same. I'm you not feel, big. And you're so, but you're like still so nice and sweet. So oh when God, your fans meet you, are they surprised that like your yeah. positive attitude? Oh my God. They're like, they're like, I thought you were a bitch and we love the bitch, yeah. but we're so happy you're like this. And- I actually get that so often because it's so important for me to meet my fans. I hate saying fans because I just feel like it's like meet these people who, you know, coexist with me and support me. And when I go to when I have shows, I always unless I'm sick, I stay afterwards at the merch booth and just meet everyone because I couldn't do it without them, Mm -hmm. you know, and. Mm -hmm. They're like the true fans who come out and know my lyrics and stay like it's a Monday or a Tuesday and they're there. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I forget your question. That's but, okay. You're doing great. Um, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. People often think I am because I'm very private. Yeah. And I have like um, this one Tommy face I do in all my music videos and on my Instagram or whatever. Right. Which is like. Right, face. just this kind of like staring right it's like through void. you. Yeah. It's like devoid of emotion. Right, I'm right. I'm falling into an abyss. And so people expect one thing and they're pleasantly surprised to see that you're yeah. actually just... I definitely feel that way head. sometimes, really? but not around people. So like, I'm, a, I'm a people person. That sounds like, like I'm in an interview saying that, but no, sorry. Um, if I see somebody, if I'm alone, I can feel really dark. But at the minute I see anybody, it could be the guy dropping off my package or like someone in the elevator, yeah. people just make me happy. So I'm, it just, you know, yeah. there's a difference between me alone making shit and, and me alone taking photos. I take, I spend a lot of time alone because yeah. I like to be, a, I like to have my alone time. But the minute I'm with someone, I'm happy to be there and smiling. And I think that's what throws people off. Right. Um, let's talk about the kind of trajectory of, of the fashion and modeling career. Because, I, I, I mean, be, becoming like <laughs> yeah, an sorry. unintentional fashion icon, was that something that you that you foresaw happening? Oh, no. No, yeah. <laughs> Not at all. Um, when brands would hit me for campaigns, I'd be like, oh, what? Did you feel instantly comfortable in that world or was it something that oh, you yeah, had? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you kind of like yeah. naturally extroverted to feel comfortable walking down a, a runway and not a big deal? Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I was performing, so, yeah. but yeah, I probably couldn't walk in heels down the runway. <laughs> but um, yeah, I felt comfortable. Yeah. It's like, I don't know what else to say. I, mm-hmm. I, I actually, I like being in that world. Um, I think with fashion, it pulls a lot from the underground and then through fashion, it becomes mainstream. And I often feel like, 
even though people say now, oh, you're bigger now, I don't feel bigger. Because you still come from feel, that underground world. Yeah, I still feel underground. Yeah. Um, because I, I still don't sell out in my mind right. to with my music. Like I still write it all and I still do everything myself. So even if there's a touch more um, like pop in it or what I was saying before, Polish, maybe more yeah. like uh, digestible. Yeah. To me, it's still subversive because I'm always doing something that no one's expecting me to do. Like no one expects me to make pop music. Yeah. And they tell me I can't. And that just makes me want to do it. Right. Which in itself is almost kind of subversive. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's a very <laughs> interesting take that like um, fashion is inspired by the underground because, yeah, that kind of. Um, contextualizes it in that like you were people's muse you know what I mean people were looking at your underground records and going like oh this is something the rest of the world needs to see and thereby making it more presentable to like the mainstream mm -hmm. right like how does it feel to be someone's muse I mean I'm my own muse so. yeah true like I think what happened actually when I dropped the Tommy video mm -hmm. that was like the first time I think it all just kind of like synced mm -hmm. with the fashion and the music synced because mm -hmm. I put out a video um, that was, it's really, it's a, a video that's really important to me for reasons that have nothing to do with how explicit it is. Mm -hmm. It's because I wanted to put out a video that I had complete control over because I feel like a lot of the times when you're, when you're at shoots or doing a lot of stuff, you're not in control of the creative in mm -hmm. fashion, mm -hmm. which is fine because I love collaborating and I love, you know, being in new in, in new ideas that I didn't think of. So that's like a whole other thing. But with my music videos, what, what I really like about them is I get to have full creative control and I get to control everything down to the coloring at the end, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. whether, whatever it is um, from... I have like st stylists that I work with and, and stuff like that. So the Tommy video for me was important because it was kind of the first time that I made a video that crossed over into that world. Mm -hmm. But it was also present in in my music career too. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I like, I think um, because I'm a visual artist, I get just as excited about aesthetic and visual things than I do about music. And in my mind, my music is sort of an aesthetic. Like, it's not autobiographic, but it's like a part of my art practice. Yeah. So... I think that's one of the things that I find most interesting about you that I might not have picked up had I not talked to you previously is like knowing your background in art school and mm -hmm. film school and as a visual artist and a sculptor and a painter and yeah. a... You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's almost like Tommy Genesis as a whole is is a subversive art project, right? Every choice that you make is part of this ongoing uh, installation. Good choices and like, bad. You, you, what's that? <laughs> Good choices yeah. and bad, yeah. But do you, does that make sense? I mean, mm -hmm. obviously you think yeah. about that. So, But yeah, that's how I kind of look at your whole project is like this this giant human installation. Yeah? Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I would say yes. Yeah. And I would also say um, I think it's also different fragments of my personality because mm -hmm. it's still me mm -hmm. and like it's still very close to my my heart and what I'm going through day to day and mm -hmm. the things I write about but I think um it's it sort of it, it it is like that but there's a a connection between me the human and my art mm -hmm. in a way that I think people don't realize because it is it is art but it's also my own personal therapy and how I deal with my own life and mm -hmm. what I'm going through and how I, you know, normalize all these things that feel weird to me and how I interact socially and stuff like that. I don't know. It's a lot of things yeah. that have to do with who I am, but um, I've definitely taken it and just made a career out of it right you know I mean? right yeah speaking of like dealing with your l life through your music this catharsis like wh what is what is life like now you, last time i met you you had just moved to la from vancouver mm -hmm. how, how have you taken to la do you like it yeah i like it yeah you do you feel like this might be like a forever home in mm -hmm. la it yeah. feels like home yeah it does feel like home. when i go home i'm like oh i want to go home yeah how often do you get to go back to vancouver nowadays 
I go back all the time. Really? I have an, a niece and nephew. Oh, awesome. So they're, Congrats. they're thank you. Yeah. But they're new, so I go back and see them all the time. That's um, amazing. I'm not actually home in LA that often. I'm home like one week out of my month, which is yeah. crazy. But when I'm home, it's so funny because my management and everyone just leaves me alone because they the know they're like, time. Tommy's sleeping, Tommy's out, outside. Like, right. I love LA. LA feels, feels like home. Um, I'm just such a, 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 like, I need hot weather. And the minute I go back to Canada, I'm like, what were we thinking? Right. Why did we live here? But yeah. yeah. Uh, talking to my family about Alaska, it's the same thing. I'm like, how are you guys? Your family's li- from Alaska? Yeah, but we're still, I'm still, my, my brother and mom are still up there. Like, how are you guys living through negative 20? That's crazy. Like, move down here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel the same way. I'm like a hot weather fanatic. Love it. Mm-hmm. Um, being that you are only in LA or at home, you know, getting mm-hmm. to decompress one week a month. Tell me like the realities of your schedule nowadays. Like, w- w- what's it? what's it like <laughs> being a sought after artist that people everybody's wanting something so like where do you go um I think okay so what's really cool about my job is I if I don't have anything that day Mm -hmm. I get to just be in my pjs I go get a coffee I go sleep I hang out with like whoever I want to see um and I don't have any rules like at the end of the day it's my business Mm -hmm. you know I work for myself and there's no rules so if I really need to move something, I can. If mm. I really need to say no to something, I can. But I'm super invested in it. And I think that's maybe the shift that happened in my life since we talked last. Is before, mm. I just did it for fun. And I really did it without thought. And I, I just did it because it was something that came to me. And, you know, making music I've always done. Yeah. Whether or not I've put it out online or anything like that. But... um now I kind of just treat it as my career and I yeah so if I have a shoot that's like I get up and then that's a day Mm -hmm. you know if I it's really just shoots (laughs) meetings yeah but I have a pretty open schedule and I think um it's mostly because when I'm home they know that I just need my time. Yeah. Talk to me about that, that importance <laughs> of downtime, right? So ju- just today there was like mm-hmm. this clip going viral of, of Steve Harvey talking about like, you can't sleep eight hours a day and be successful and da 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 I sleep so and, much. And then the counterpoint was you, you, there's a video clip also going viral of like Warren Buffett and Bill Gates talking about like how empty they keep their schedules because – big ideas come in downtime. So like, do you find mm-hmm. yourself when you're at stuff like this, you probably don't have time to think about the next big move, but when you're decompressing at home, like, is that where, when the genius strikes? I think a, a lot of people put pressure on you as a creative to just create mm-hmm. like, like immediately, right? like create. And sometimes it takes me five minutes. Sometimes it takes me five hours. Mm-hmm. So I, I will be writing a verse and I, I might freestyle it and do it right away. Or I might need five hours to write eight bars sometimes if I'm having an off day. And Mm. I've just learned not to put pressure on myself. So the only way I can make everything happen is if I'm in, if I've slept, that's a big thing for me. Like everyone I know makes fun of me because I sleep so much, Mm -hmm. but I'll just be asleep. Like every airplane ride on the tour bus, I'm always asleep, but I, I need, I need that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I totally. (laughs) And I need to feel like, at the end of the day, no one's telling me what to do because I all if I feel like I have to do something, I won't want to do it. So right. then when I do it, I won't do it the best I can. Yeah. When I was younger, something that didn't make sense to me was this idea of like protecting your energy. I just thought like, oh, I need to do it. I need to do it. And now yeah. that I, now as I from kept, vampires, you know what I'm saying? No. Yeah. From vampires for sure. But like um, swag, swag Dracula's. But I, I really feel like oh, I meant real vampires. Uh, no, not real vampires. Oh. I don't know. Um but yeah, I feel like you need to protect that energy and you need to conserve that energy so that way when that energy needs to be present, it's there for you, yeah? Yeah. Does that make sense? No, it does. <laughs> These are just things I don't think about. Yeah. Like scheduling, I just don't think about. But I know if I don't want to do something or can't, I just won't. And, you know. And you got that choice. Yeah. I, I think it's important to have that choice because yeah. the minute you feel like you, you're tied to it, it's just like, you don't enjoy your life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is getting like... <laughs> no, it's okay. Okay. Um, we could talk about something else yeah, now. T- so tell me about the making of Tommy Genesis. How did your process differ from World Vision? Because I know World Vision was a very <laughs> independent project where you were yeah. kind of alone a lot doing everything and probably recording at your, at your crib or something. Oh, yeah. It was like in my bedroom. Right. But in between that time, you get signed, right? 
Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah. and I'm sure that they give you a certain level of independence, but at the same time, it is like a, a committee to, mm-hmm. a, to an extent. I mean, I'm signed to an uh, indie label. Yeah. So I actually have the same amount of independence. Awesome. N- nobody, uh, no one tells me what to do. That's so sick. <laughs> like, but that, that's why they wanted me. Like, yeah. they didn't want me to tell me what to do. You right. know what I mean? Right. And for me, that was always just the first thing was the creative I control. Yeah. And I'm not, and it's to the point where I almost feel bad, but I'm not even open to To suggestions, suggestions, which is kind of probably the guy I am when I'm working with other artists and I'm working with maybe an A&R or someone like that who can help me with the project. I'm open to that. Yeah. But as far as label goes, um, creatively, I was always doing my own thing anyways. And they knew, they know that and they respect that. They love that. And that's kind of the mutual respect there is like, they just wanted the artist that I was. Right. So I'm just being the artist that I am. And then they're just giving you more resources to put that exactly, artist out there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm able to like do my own stuff. Thanks for tuning in. Skull Candy wanted to show you some love for listening by hooking you up with 15% off your next purchase. Head over to SkullCandy.com and use the code YouFeelMe19 at checkout to get 15% off anything site-wide. For Tommy Genesis as compared to World Vision, did you get in the room with new people? Were you working yes, with new producers? Actually, Were you with, yeah. Yes, to, like so funny. Tommy Genesis was the first project I was in the studio. That's what I was wondering. Isn't was that like, crazy? Did you go to a studio? Yeah. I went to a studio. But that's like a huge, th- that's a big difference between like, you know, getting signed and being independent is like, you, yeah. now you have access to professional facilities. And I was in the studio with, uh, I, f- I first went in with like Charlie Heat, yeah. The first time we met, we made Hunter Bad. Really? The first day. Wow. Yeah. And it was like an, a concept for the song I had already had, but then we went in and made the beat and everything. Um, I worked a lot with him. I worked with another producer, Jeff Gittleman. Mm-hmm. He kind of coaxed me into singing for the first time. The singing he sounds was, good, dude. He was like, yeah. he was like, Tommy, say this again. And he was like, hmm. It's like, your voice sounds really deep. I bet you can sing. And I was like, I don't think I can sing. He's like, okay, let's try it. And with a little auto-tune, That's I'm it. telling you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Auto-tune is a fantastic tool because it can get the melodies that you have in your head Not all the time, but the playing with you know it is fun. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, I know. I thought it was great that you went on a limb and started singing because that wasn't as present on, on World Vision. And I feel like... Yeah. Tommy Genesis is very melodic. And, mm-hmm. and that made me wonder, like, did you get in the room with new people? Because it seems like you had a new yeah, a new energy. And you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, did you find the difference between those two producers was part of what um, uh, maybe helped influence the kind of side A and side B feel? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was also um, in the studio with Jean-Baptiste mm. and with uh, this producer from Toronto. Mm-hmm. Called, his name is Bijan. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Definitely having having good engineers yeah. was huge for me because shout out Jason <laughs> because um, basically I was recording myself in in whatever spaces on my computer and you were mixing yourself too right not well no? but yeah. like yeah I, I think uh, World Vision we got mixed but a lot of stuff was just you know it you don't think about it and you just put it out but right. then having all these people come in who are so talented at just getting you to the best version of your voice or like the best, you know, just Mm -hmm. things like that have helped me so much Mm -hmm. because I've realized how it could sound as opposed to just how it sounds dry or how it sounds one time. And for Tommy Genesis, the album I got, like I'm, I'm, I became sort of a perfectionist in I think a good way and maybe in a way that took it too far at times, but it was a learning experience of just where I can grow to. Right. When you finally get access to those kind of professionals that can really dial things in and are super familiar with the equipment, it's almost like you, your brain is allowed to have bigger ideas Mm because when you are doing it independently, you know, the limits of your own talents Mm -hmm. and you know, the, or like talents, like mixing and stuff like, Oh, or like the, the limits of my mic, like, Oh, I can't do this because my mic won't handle it. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? And so you're almost like putting it's fun to grow. Yeah. You're putting a a damper on yourself Mm -hmm. and then you get out there and it's like now, boom, my big ideas can come to fruition. Right. Yeah. Did you feel? that yeah yeah felt that okay for sure yeah, yeah. me too um, so i'd always have things i would hear in my mind and m- by myself i couldn't make them happen right even like 
um, getting down like a template, like a demo, like oh, trying to put the production in myself or trying to record it in the way I can hear yeah, it. Right. And I always will hear the song or I'll hear the melody. Sometimes I'll fall asleep with like a new song in my head mm -hmm. and I'll hear all the notes. But at times I, it's so hard to take that and put it into the song. That makes total sense. And it goes into the song, but when it's in the song, it sounds so different. Mm -hmm. But then you just got to, you got to work with it and be right. like, you know, bridging that gap between what I'm hearing and what I'm making. I'm slowly starting to learn how to mm -hmm. just like with voice lessons or with sitting in with other producers with doing things I didn't do before just to learn um like music theory and yeah. learn all these notes and where and how I can how I can get these ideas out over here onto the paper yeah that's so amazing um it's been cool when you just said that you might um think of a melody while you're falling asleep or something and we talked about sleep earlier that made me think of a question that I forgot knowing that you love to sleep so much <laughs> do you dream a lot <laughs> Yes. Are you a dreamer? Yes. Do you write down your dreams? Do you remember them? Bro, my dreams scare me. Are they nightmares often? Or I have so many nightmares. I have so many lucid dreams. Really? I had a dream yesterday yeah. where I couldn't wake up and I knew it was a dream, but every time I woke up, it was in a new dream. Oh, no. But it was really creepy because every time I woke up, it was the same picture of like me waking up with like looking at my hand and then it would go into my day and then something weird or bad would happen I'd be like oh it's a dream and then I would go back to sleep to try to wake myself up okay I'm going back to sleep so when I wake up I'll be awake in real life because I knew I was late for my meeting mm. in my dream and I was in real life oh wow so I knew I was like I was late for my meeting because I didn't hear my alarm I kept waking up to my hand again I'd be like is this real life right living and then something so fucking weird would happen yeah like horrific or whatever and I'd be like fuck I'm dreaming go back to bed and I, I fell asleep and I was supposed to take a 30 minute nap. I fell asleep for like three hours. And when I woke up, I was so angry. Yeah. I woke up and I was like, oh, fuck, this is real life. Uh, and I was just so angry. Yeah, I just pissed. Um, you say you lucid dream. Those are ones where you like have control of what you're doing. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, what like that's a lucid dream when yeah. you know you're dreaming and you're trying to wake up. Oh, OK, OK. And I wasn't trying to control it because yeah. I was just like, I want out. <laughs> I'm trying yeah, to yeah, get out, out of here. here. Right. Then I was w late for my meeting. Um, what other big accomplishments have taken you aback where you're just kind of like, wow, is this life? I did um, a shoot with Fenty and I met Rihanna. And oh, I, my God. That was like insane. Really? That was insane. Wow. Mm -hmm. What was it like to get that I'm call? a Fenty beauty ambassador. Congrats. But they didn't drop it yet, so yeah. I don't know if we're allowed to put this on here. Well, but hopefully, the, hopefully, hopefully we can. it drops before July. I'll be watching the timeline. Yeah, that was really cool having her reach out being like i want tommy genesis for That's this so so sick. that was that and a few other things were just like i was like okay you know even if i'm feeling like a depressed artist right now i'm obviously on the right path because yeah. i guess people are fucking with it so i'm gonna keep going that's so amazing yeah, yeah congrats um well what's i mean this is such a generic closing question but like kind of what's next like are you working on new music now yes without spoiling anything yeah i'm working on so much music yeah i'm sitting on a lot of music um trying to decide if it's going to be an album or if there are going to be singles that come out every yeah. other week just trying to figure that 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 the concept of it out mm -hmm. and like the vi the visual side of it out mm -hmm. before i just start dropping it but yeah i'm working on music that's it's the best music I've ever made. That's awesome. So I'm excited about it. When you're sitting on that many songs, I always wonder what goes into the thought process of whittling them down. You know what I mean? Like who I'm do just you trying to drop them all. You're just gonna <laughs> I don't know. At some point. I'm yeah. so bad at choosing. Yeah, because they all like feel like your kids. babies. Yeah. Right, exactly. It's like, what's your favorite kid? I'm like, well, <laughs> who's, who's in your brain trust that helps you make decisions like that? Like when you're like, oh, I can't choose between these two. Like who do you reach out to? Shout out your team. I'm really close with my management, yeah. EQT. Yeah. Um, a lot of people on my management, I run a lot of stuff by, mostly mm. like Dan and Ramya, my main managers. Yeah. But that, um, definitely friends. Like I have like f three friends I definitely run shit by. Just like, hey, what do you think of this? Because yeah. I think, um, yeah, but at the end of the day, I put out shit that, that I just like. It's yours. Even yeah. like with the Tommy Genesis project, a lot of people had criticism for 
certain songs like It's Okay or Play With It. Mm -hmm. We're like, oh, you got to do it this way. Mm. Got to do that this way. And at at a certain point, I'm I I just ask myself, do you do you like it because do you not like it because it sounds new, and because you're uncom you're not used to it being this way, right? And maybe that's a good thing in the long run, right? Because sometimes I'm like I don't want to change a song just to have it be more palatable, yeah, or understandable. Like something you may not like, like a sound or the way it's recorded or something like that may sound different and mm. bad to you, mm. but then it might just be a new sound. Right. And maybe it's maybe it's okay. Yeah, sometimes things that are ahead of their time mm. sound grating or brash initially, and then yeah. you go back mm -hmm. and you go, oh, wow, this person like really fucking had it figured out early. Mm. You um, never know. I want to thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you. you coming in. I'm glad to sit down with you and talk again. It's fantastic. Uh, I'm excited to see you perform today. What song are you going to be doing? I'm going to do Hunter Bad. Hunter Bad, the first song that you made with Charlie, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tell the people before we get out of here where they can find you online, Ms. Genesis. You can just Google me. No kidding. Yeah, the real talk, you can't just you can Google, Google her. Google me. Yeah, you'll find her. <laughs> um, it's at Tommy Genesis on everything, right? Yeah, it's TommyGenesis.com. I don't know. Look for Tommy the blue check marks. You'll find her. Yeah, you can uh, find me. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you yeah. so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for it. having me. Yeah, we're stoked. Yeah. Um, my name is Lee. Some of you guys might know me as Intuition. You can follow me online at It's Intuition across all platforms. And uh, this was You Feel Me, the Skull Candy podcast where we talk to artists and athletes about life and culture. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate <laughs> it. That's it. Thank okay, you. Okay, cool.